iPhone 15 Pro Max two months later. Now, I've actually had this for nearing three, but I didn't want to call it three because we're not quite at three, although my thoughts aren't going to change too much from then. Do me a favor before we get going, smash the like button for me. It does help out the channel. It does help you to get more content in your feed from the channel. If you're like, I subscribed, where the heck is the videos at? It helps out a lot. Also, if you're looking forward to some more Android content, I got the Pixel 8 Pro update coming soon. I'm going to talk about my experience with that. So you want to be subscribed. But back to this one, I'm going to begin by talking about was the battery life amazing? Now, if you haven't watched already, just go to the Nick Ackerman channel and you can go watch my vlog. I did a real world vlog on this um, phone. So we took it out into the real world. I didn't, you, I didn't do a test on the table. We took it out day all day long. You can see right here, go check it out. 15 Pro Max real life battery test. So on the topic of battery, I gotta tell you, I've been really monitoring this and it's a full day phone easily, um, pretty darn easily. <laughs> you know, it's actually more than a day. I think heavy users though would wanna top this up mid morning the next day, but I never have to charge it at night because it just lasts and lasts. Now the screen on time is well over seven, eight hours, so I don't have an issue there. And I just gotta say, it's amazing battery life. It doesn't touch though the 13 Pro Max. So if you're looking to get better battery life than the 13 Pro Max, I didn't see it here, but it's the best since the 13 Pro Max. That's what I gotta say. The next thing I am actually pretty darn um, impressed by it's how loud the speaker performance has been on here, but not only how loud it's been, it's been louder, but also crispier. It just sounds better than before. So if you really like audio from your phone, it's very good. But combine the fact that it has faster Bluetooth than ever, faster connectivity than ever, the newer USB-C AirPods, with the USB-C charging, the cable goes together with pretty much everything now. If you have USB-C products, it also connects very fast. So the audio through those are good as well. So it's just a great audio experience around the board with excellent noise canceling if you do have AirPods. A few months later, I do have to talk about performance. Has it been amazing? And the answer is yes, it has. Now, it has been amazing in the sense that the A17 Pro chip really makes everything on this phone fly. Where you really notice it though, is that when you're going through applications, everything remains open in the background. And you also really notice it in gaming, how fast games can launch and play. So I was playing some Call of Duty on here, as well as some PUBG, and it just, it launches these games so fast. And then when you're playing those games, it just, the, the, the graphics are just ridiculous good. So if you wanna do some heavy stuff, you can even play some other games out here, it's just gonna be an amazing experience for you. So if that's something that you're into, go ahead and pick up the 15 Pro Max. You're really, really gonna like this. And this game coming up December 20th, 20, 20, 2023, Resident Evil 4, this is gonna be amazing too. You can also pair a controller to this and have a great experience. So after indexing, after a few updates, the heat management has come down it's been a really strong performer. Now cameras, let's talk about those. I think it's finally time to say, say this. I mean, I've said it before, but we're now at the point with the iPhone camera, ultra wide, super long zoom, 25 times digital video, 4K 60 cinematic video, portrait mode automatic on the front. We're now at the point where iPhone replaces a full camera, even for some professionals. Um, Serious photographers, though, and people that use the camera for their job, like maybe wedding photographers or wedding videographers or people like that, they cannot pull up with an iPhone. They, they just got to look professional. They got to have the premium stuff. And some media members who need a faster workflow via SD card or something like that are probably not going to go iPhone only. But 99% of the rest of everybody, you don't need a camera anymore. You don't need a camera with multiple lenses because you have multiple lenses here that pretty much function in every single way, shape, and form that a main camera would function. Not only that, if you do go ahead and download some manual camera applications or you download some manual video applications, ones can do both of them, you can adjust things like ISO, white balance, and exposure values and stuff like that. 
And you could take this out of the basic iPhone camera mode and make it a little bit more premium. Also, the results turn out freaking ridiculous. So we don't got to go on and on about that. I've showed you those in reviews before. It's a full camera replacement. If you're not needing a professional grade camera for maybe some professional work or something like that. Um, I still use a camera here on the channel, a main camera, not because I have to. I could actually shoot all these videos on the iPhone and just airdrop them to the Mac and edit them. But the reason I still use main cameras is because microphones, as you can see, you hear that? That's the microphone. They attach better. I can monitor the audio through my headphones. And I like over here, we have an SD card slot so I can simply quickly, it just speeds up my workflow. But I could use iPhone if I wanted to. That's how great the cameras are. It just slows me down a little bit and I can't monitor audio as easily. Can still do it, but not as easily. I need to get some separate accessories and I don't want to do that right now. The next thing is that the iPhone 15 Pro Max feels the same way I felt about the iPhone 14 Plus last year, where it just, for its size, it feels so light in the hand. And two months later, I got this ultra thin case, which I will leave linked down below. I got this white frost color. You can get this in full clear or you can get this in a matte black. With this case on, it feels super light and super thin. Yeah, this is not even a name brand case. It's just some cheap brand I've found on Amazon, but I'll leave a link down below if you like this style, but just so minimal, so thin, so clean. Those complaints I had before about how the iPhone uh, gets really smudgy on the edges and nasty, not no more with titanium. The thing just looks beautiful all the time. You can you can see a little bit of smudging here, and it's a little bit more noticeable on the black titanium model, but you just wipe it down a little bit, and it's clean. I just feel like long-term, this is going to look so much better than a stainless steel. There is one con, though, to this in that it's not quite as durable, so you can crack the back a little bit easier. I'm not a major fan of that, so I've actually been a little bit more cautious and a little bit worried in my two months of usage that I'm going to leave a case on it majority of the time. A lot of people see the videos like, Nick, bro, why are you not putting a case on your iPhone during the video? That's because we're only about a foot from this table. It's not going to damage nothing here in the video, or I would be using a case every time in the video. So great for those of you who have OCD about cleaning your phone. You'll love titanium, especially the natural color or maybe even the white one. Um, the darker blue and black, though, those probably get a little more smudgy and dirty, uh, but they're still not going to be as bad as stainless steel. So, yeah, the next thing is the display has been fantastic. It gets super bright day to day. It feels nice to use because, you know, it's edge to edge here, just about. Dynamic Island is still a little bit of an eyesore, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think Apple's going to reduce that in the future. This is about as close to an all screen we're going to get on this slab style until they get rid of Dynamic Island, getting the focus, unless they get rid of Dynamic Island. Now, I will say, though, that if you're looking for a super vibrant display, I think this one has got good contrast ratio with the OLED. It doesn't have that same level of vibrancy as like a Samsung. So if you put this side by side with a Samsung, the Samsung going to make it look like it's not the best thing in the world, but it's still pretty good overall. Bluetooth connectivity is super fast on here with the 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E is super fast. That's something you don't really think about, but you actually would notice if you went back to an older phone, how snappy Bluetooth connections are and Wi-Fi speeds are. They blaze through everything on both these phones or both these phones on this phone compared to some of the older phones. So it's just something to keep in mind. The single biggest change though was USB-C and I've talk this one into the ground already but where it's really been important for me is not necessarily that it just has it but because i use samsung phones as well like a galaxy s23 ultra right here it also has a usb-c cable so i could actually share the ports in addition if you are using airpods or some like samsung buds for example you can charge via the same cable between like multiple devices like that like headphones MacBooks, tablets, all those different changes, um, all those different devices being charged via the same cable is pretty amazing. So I like that. Also, you can you can send this to a display via this cable, via a USB-C cable to an HDMI. 
And you could uh, operate your iPhone on a full screen. It's nothing like Dex, though, Samsung Dex, where you can kind of make it like a computer. But at least you can beam it up via a cable, which could be useful. You can connect the keyboard to this. And a mouse, I don't know if a mouse works. I think that's on iPad OS, but you can connect the keyboard and kind of like use it like a little computer if you have a display and an HDMI to USB C. So that's something kind of cool. Also, I will say at the end of the day, Dynamic Island has been a little bit obtrusive, but at the same time, it's useful. I used it on my lift ride the other day. I could see where the lift car was. And when you get some, you know, orders and stuff like that for some delivery apps, that works there too. So it has its uses, but it also can be obtrusive in terms of watching video and stuff. So when you do look at content, for example, it does get in the way. Just a little bit, we're missing video there. When you do look at content up there, you see it does get in the way just a little bit, especially when you're looking at landscape. But a lot of people have said that they'll just watch content on their iPad or a TV if that really bothers them. But it doesn't seem to bother too much because a lot of times you would have to pinch in the video to, to have the dynamic island really mess with you. So this phone comes in at a whopping $1,300 and goes up from there. For some countries, this phone in certain storages are over like 2K. So is it worth it? Um, at those prices, I don't think so. But at the price I paid for it, about 1200 I think it is because they hold their value super long term, these iPhones. Not only do they hold their value, they get updated for so many years that if you actually break it down how much it is per day, per dollar, you did the math. It's kind of worth it. I'd say if you if you have skipped out on the 13 Pro Max and the 14 Pro Max, you have a 12 Pro Max. This is a great update. Also, if you have an 11 Pro Max, massive update um, for this phone for you. Um, year over year, if I didn't make YouTube videos, though, the phone I'd still be on would be the 13 Pro Max right now. That would be the phone I'd still be using, and I wouldn't let this be the phone I would get. But at, because I do YouTube videos on tech, and I love tech, I picked up the 15 Pro Max, and I think it's been fantastic. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's near there, and we're getting to the point where these phones are so good these days that they're nearing like to the point where it's like, what else can you do? So every time something new comes out, it's just like they had to find something because most things are already pretty great. Apple can improve a few things on here, though. They can make the dynamic island a little bit smaller. I also think they can make a larger 6.9 inch screen. I know some people say, come on, it's already large enough. Yeah, but they've had 6.7 for years. Samsung's screen is 6.8. They can go 6.9. That would be pretty nice. Call it maybe an iPhone Ultra. We really need a split screen mode because there is no way to split screen. It's just one application at a time. And then if I want to split, there's there's nothing I could do. It's just a single app at a time. I know humans can't multitask effectively in terms of some of the research out there saying that we can only do one thing at a time. Maybe Apple believes in that. But even a simple multi split screen once in a while can be helpful um, especially like the one you have on the iPad. It's simple. It's not too in your face. Yeah. So let's add that seriously. Um, and the camera design, I think is getting old. <laughs> this iPhone camera design looks like 11 pro max is bigger. So I would like to see a switch in the camera design. And lastly, the colors this year were kind of dull. And even a couple months later, I look at this and I'm not like, Oh, that's so vivid and beautiful. I'm just like, that titanium is nice. It looks like a premium phone. And I still think it's gorgeous. But um, the color, I wish the colors stood out more. Like some of the older iPhones, they just they just popped more. Um, so this was a little bit of a dull color year for me. Anyway, that's it. That's my 15 Pro Max two months later. I'll probably give you another update on this type of phone in six months. So maybe four months from now, I'll do another you know long-term update. So thumbs up, be subscribed for that, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Let me know your experience if you have a 15 Pro, Pro Max, 15 Plus, or 15, and I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well, and peace.